So guys, uh, my name is Saurabh Moody and I'm a chief data scientist for, an, uh, for a platform company and a natural language company called Alpha AI. And in today's, uh, in the today's session, I'm going to talk about what is Alpha AI and what kind of capabilities we were able to build using Alpha AI natural engine and uh, how we enable some kind of natural language magic on Druid. For all of you to know, like uh, I was just introduced to Druid with uh, one of the guys at Imply last year. And uh, coming from a very, very data background, it was very exciting to me to see a platform like Druid where you can run sub-second query. And being a chief data scientist there at Alpha AI, my day-to-day -day job uh, revolves around uh, building natural language, building natural language kind of SQL generation tools, like specifically for the data analytics companies over there. And uh, since I love Druid so much, I thought, why don't I try and see what is po what are the possibilities with natural language in Druid? So. Now, helping you understand what is Alpha AI, we are making a natural language querying system for the databases of the world, right? You can use this system to create dashboards and charts and all over there. And the best part, you don't need to pre-train the systems. Now, in order to do this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a simple demonstration and then I'll help you see how I was able to activate natural language querying in Druid. So let's start with that. So behind the scenes, as you can see, I'm running a Druid version, right? Which is, uh, if my fonts are not visible, uh, I'll speak at the same time, but if in case you are not able to read anything, feel free to ask. So in my Druid instance, this is a single cluster demo instance which I've created. I've got two data sources. One of the data sources is a superstore data, as you can see here. And I can go ahead and write queries on the superstore. So in the superstore data, one of the things what we do once we set up something inside Druid is we'd like to test whether data has been loaded uh, nicely or not. So this is a retail store data, which I've loaded with few thousand records. Imagine I wanted to run a query around category what I'll be able to do is I can select a category and show category. I'll remove this because time and run it. As you can see, like all of these queries are very, very easy to run. Let us try and do it on a city and say group by city. You can see it is running perfectly fine. But imagine if I wanted to run a monthly query, right? I would like to see my data on a monthly day. Now, most of the time when it goes on to any kind of uh, basic complications, like say our date time formatting, we tend to go on Google. So let's go on Google and say Druid monthly time query. SQL. So now it tells me there is a SQL and I have to go and understand these things, look out for exact syntax. Typically, it's very difficult. Now I come back to Druid and I say, if I wanted to compare anything with say furniture versus like say office supplies, I have to go ahead and create those things. So now what I'm going to show you what you can do using natural language on Druid. And then I'll also show you behind the scenes what all steps I took to do it. So let us go on insights. In this insight scene, I already have created a dashboard like this, okay? But this is an older thing. Let me help you make this dashboard right, right away right now in front of you. So what I can do is I can click on something, let us say, Roy Demo 2. I'm going to add this piece, right? So, okay. For uh, most of you, you would not know the data store. So let me help you understand the data store first so that you can relate your questions. So this data store is about uh, a company, which is a retail company, which sells a lot of products across different states in the US. Like this will relate to any, any kind of Salesforce data, SAP data, or any kind of time series data which you have. Though uh, this is just a sample data, you can utilize any kind of data to be there. Okay, now let's try and see what kind of questions I can ask. And when I click on this question mark, 
I can see that there are certain columns which are available to me. Let's give it a moment. Okay. And these columns are the same columns which we have in our Druid instance, which is like the same columns. Product name, product ID, postal code. I'll come up here. One second. So you can see it is the same column. Though I have done few settings in it, like for an example, if it was a product name, the real column, I have created a synonym called product. Now let's take a scenario. In this scenario, I would like to understand uh, what is my basic question. So I can say, what is our sales? And I can go ahead and pin this thing. And we can say, what about our profit? Okay, let's make it profit at this thing. And maybe this time I would like to ask, how much discount have you offered to everyone? Okay. And then this time I'm going to do different. So this time I have got something known as, let's say average sales days kind of stuff. So I'll say, how many uh, say customers do we have right now? So let's make it a unique customer, 794. Now we've got this kind of information in place. Now the time has come that from basic queries, can we go ahead and move on to much complex queries? Like, can you show me my different category level sales uh, across US? Now you'll start to find some colors there. So I've added this thing. Now I am looking out for, what about the different ship mode? which we are offering to everyone. Can you show me the, say, average uh, the time we are taking? Okay, so this actually uh, talked about the count which we are doing. Now let me make some arrangements and try and play with this data a bit. Now I am on a standard class, but I would like to know what are the different modes which were available. So I clicked on standard class and I was interested in understanding what kind of uh, different uh, ship uh, status were there. So I can say, help me understand the different ship status which we have right now in the system. So we realized that we have got different ship status like this. Now the real fun starts, this were some basic level data. Now let's see if we can combine these pieces and I'm using natural language. The good part is all the queries which you are seeing is getting created on Druid. And uh, we are going to go for a complex query. It's just like I'm trying to build a story. Now I find that uh, there might be something to do with the region. So I can say, can you show me my region level sales? Okay, so I got all my four different charts over here. Now I'm interested in understanding, is there any correlation in this? Or maybe I can ask, the, can you show me all our say first class customers uh, which are buying stuff from East? So I said, these are the customers who were buying first class from East which is fine. Now I feel that there might be, what are the ship late pieces? I want both of them. So I can also say, can you show me our uh, sales across different ship modes and uh, also display the ship status against them? So what we are able to, okay, let me make it ship mode. Okay. Now you are able to find that in standard class, most of them are shipped early. But surprisingly, in your first class, there is no shipped early. So what I would like to do is, maybe I would like to understand, is there a correlation between this thing? And I'm also going to make you see the query. So I can say, can you show me the relationship between different regions and what kind of ship 
mode they are preferring and also the kind of ship status they have. Voila. So what you just saw was a small demonstration. I'm very sure that everybody will be very, very excited to see what we are able to build just by asking a few questions. But what is more exciting for me today is to show you how you can use your Druid instance. This was just a pre prep data. So I'm going to come back on this thing, but let me first of all, go to a new dashboard, okay, which is blank and try and help you see how I have set it up. So if you take the counter right now, let's start the counter and see how much time does it really takes if you want to enable your Druid instance with alpha. So I go up in the data, okay? I click on the data set and I select alpha SQL, which is actually a Druid instance because alpha uses Druid as the backend for all our customers. And now it says alpha SQL URL and the dashboard name. So what you do is you go ahead and inspect the element. I'm just helping you see what kind of services you need to go in, okay? Typically, if you ask for run this query, you get this kind of app service and there is a request URL. This request URL might not be visible, but I'll show it to you here. Mm, let me try and show it to you. I'm going to increase the font size. So what I've done is I've just added off a sample instance of my Druid URL here, and this is just the API. That is one single connection do you need to configure it. And I will say this is Druid Summit 2. Okay, and I'll test the connection. It says, yes, I'm able to connect. Then the next stage, it is showing me the same tables which are available in Druid for me. As you can see, I've got one Superstore and the Wikipedia kind of stuff. I'm going to select, say, Superstore for this example and go next. Now, what it does it, you can, in case of multiple tables, you can select multiple tables. But here, since it is one, I selected this thing. Alpha AI mechanism, what it does it, it understands the kind of dimensions and measures which are available in the system. And it automatically classifies it for you. And I say next, as you see in the matter of few seconds, what it is trying to do behind the scenes right now is trying to understand what kind of data structure is this and what kind of data is present within that structure. Like for example, to understand that there are different states like New York, California and other things, that is where it is able to understand using this technology that how do I identify that a New York is a state if somebody is telling to me about it over there, okay? And also just give you a little bit of background what, it, what how Alpha is able to make this thing possible is Alpha uses two kind of data model right away right now, okay? Just one second, okay? Alpha uses two kind of data model right away right now. And one of the data models which Alpha uses is, is a language model, which helps us understand the English pieces first. And the second uh, model which Alpha uses right now is a domain model. Domain model is a natural language model, which is basically driven by the kind of database you connect it to. If you connect it to a multiple database, uh, right, uh, a database of a bank, then the alpha starts understanding every question related to bank. And if you are connecting it alpha to a database of sales or a sales force or an SAP, accordingly, it is going to understand and learn on top of it. Now, once we have done this piece, uh, let me just show it one more time, this time a little quickly. I'm going to select alpha. I'm going to say success, say next, select this thing, go next, refresh it, save it, say next. So let me just connect it once. So once it has been connected, what it has done it, it gives you something like tables here. Okay, let me just refresh this piece once. And feel free to uh, write in your question here. So uh, basically, Senthil, uh, typically the process of learning is less than two minutes and it is not related to the size of the data set. 
and it is more related to the data structure. The size of the data set will come into play later when you talk about something like deep learning. I'm going to show you how we do that thing. Okay, so now mm, let me try it one more time very quickly. Mm, SQL. Okay, so we made it very, very, uh, while I was working on it, I say I made it very, very easy. Uh, just following the same thing, doing next. So typically it takes like less than a minute or uh, to do this thing. It doesn't take more time. Maybe this is the live environment and it's supposed to behave like this. So coming back, once you have this piece, you will have to create a catalog like the way I've created. And this catalog uh, is not only having the list of all the columns which you shared, and it will automatically divide it between three things. One is dimensions, the second is measures, and then you have got others like say a date time column or say state column, what we call it geo. I'll click on the state column, which is available in the database, right? So what I've done is, as you can see, I can say there is a date or a geo, I selected a geo and I talked about it is going to use a US one. That's about it. And what I did is I made few changes like for example, where it is actual ship days, this column name was days to ship actual, okay? Hope my screen is visible and you're able to see that thing, okay? Now I've changed this actual ship day. What does this mean is, uh, let me first help you move this thing from, say actual ship day, so I can ask, uh, what is our sum, let's say, actual ship days okay it is 48,000 total ship days now i can ask what is our average actual ship days okay so it's saying three days actual now i'm curious about it let me expand this piece now what i'm going to do is when i'm asking this actual ship days that is here all the combinations which are available okay and now with this combination, I can play with it. So I can say actual ship days across regions. Okay, so I'm saying it is four to five to six to three, which is which is being available. And I'm going to pin this piece. Let me pin this piece first. Let me come over here so that we can ensure that, okay, everything is fine. So now I'm seeing it from across region. Now I can ask uh, what about different states? So with this natural language system, what you're able to see is it's not only able to understand your English language, but it is also able to perform things like average, actual, ship days, right? Average will give you a response like this. Now you are okay with this thing. Let me go to my dashboard again and add this piece here. Now I talked about the database, uh, like date queries, right? So we wanted to say actual ship days across state. Maybe I wanted to see this by region, okay? Maybe I wanted to see this thing like what's my monthly trend looks like. So when you say about monthly trend, what it is doing is it is creating a data query based on to your date column, which is like a month and time. It is the same query which you would have to create normally. If I copy the same query here, go in draw it and paste this inquiry here and run it, it's going to give me the same response as you can see here. So now I can, you can always test this thing. The good part is you can also go ahead and click on run query and you can run this thing from alpha interface as you can see. I'm running it from alpha interface. Now the cool part comes in, if I wanted to see this thing across the region, what happens? So what system is able to do, system is able to show me my average actual ship days on a monthly trend across region, I can pin this thing. Now the funny part is, if instead of actual ship days, I say sales, system is able to tell me these kind of things also, and I can pin it. Now, when I go on my, my dashboard, I'm, I'm doing the same exercise over here. Let me delete this thing actually and try and do this thing in a different way. So say, what is our sales across region? And uh, let me ask this thing using voice. Can you perform a time series analysis on our region level monthly sales data for the last five years? 
And if possible, can you also show a forecast? So time, so sorry. Okay. There is nothing known as regional. So what I can do is I can go back here, right? And uh, wherever I have written the region column, I can add a synonym for that over there. What do you use for it from voice command? Uh, correct. Let it come. Okay, so I can click on this region piece and here I can add regional. As you can see, I'm just adding a synonym. So if in order to teach the system any new thing and you know, you can go ahead and add a synonym, I say update and I call the same piece. Did you notice? Let me expand this in for you. Did you notice what it does? It has given you a pre-computed natural language generated analysis, right? which are typically any analyst will take a lot of time to go ahead and figure it out over there by all by themselves. And now it is doing it for across different, uh, say, regions, I can say PIN, and it is also done forecasting. The cool part is it's not only about regional, what about I wanted to do this thing for state level? Okay, you see how many things? And now you wanted to say show forecast for east. That means I only want to focus on my East pieces. Now, maybe I want to remove the time series analysis and the forecast for East, but what else I can do? So you see there is a lot of information, just $23,000 and other things are coming. What about if I say where my sum sales, did you notice this is $120,000 also there, but if, if this is so high, and I'm not able to see anything else. So I say some sales is less than say 20,000. Can you see suddenly if I had to write this query, here is my query, I can copy this, go in my droid and paste it and run it. Let me remove this thing. Can you see what is happening right now? All the SQL which we always wanted to write we are able to go ahead and put this thing, use an AI technology to go ahead and generate these pieces straight away out of the box over there. Now, coming back, what we are able to see here is how about when we ask multiple things like, can you help me understand our region by state level sales and profit and also talk about the discounts and uh, show this thing for say uh, second week of July uh, 2019. If you see what I did was I asked the question with something which was very, very specific over there, right? And then I'm able to see this data on that same side and I can remove, I can compare West and East and also, I can also go ahead and do, like, let me add discount there properly. And I can do this, some kind of analysis also. So if I say, can you also perform a quadrant analysis for our sales and profit across different customers and just focus on the ones who, uh, who bought stuff from our upmarket stores and uh, specifically the technology ones. So guys, here is where we are on the on the Druid technology side and how we enable this thing. Now we are going to go a little bit deeper on that what is also possible with this technology is if I hope everybody can remind like remember this software. Okay. This is Excel. Now, how cool it will be if I can get data from my Druid cluster in Excel which can apply security and everything on top of it. If I can ask, how is our sales across different, uh, say, states uh, for, say, California and Texas? Uh, also tell me the categories and segment we are operating in. If you have to take a guess, right, what is going to happen if I press enter? 
I feel free to write it in the chat. Let's see. Now the same Druid data is all available to wherever we want, starting from Excel, Web, Voice, WhatsApp, Microsoft Teams, Slack, wherever you can think it. We will be soon launching APIs for you to be able to do this thing. Let me show this what happens. As soon as you press enter, Alpha is able to do the same magic from other in environments like Excel. It took me less than 10 lines of code actually to process this question inside Excel. There are though, of course, other lines of code for doing this thing. One more good part is that when you're seeing this question, you're seeing your California and Texas, now you change your mind. You say like, how about adding New York here? I would like to compare. Can you see? Now you can see California, Furniture, New York. Now I can go up here and I can remove, let's say, office supplies from here. Can you see? It is a real, real Excel chart. So not only we were able to use Druid as a backend, right? And uh, being also being able to create a natural language system on top of it, which can work in less than uh, you know five minutes on any of your Druid clusters. Now, coming back, let me also talk about a few of the things in, in the Druid world, how these things are there. Hope, oh, I am hoping that everybody enjoyed uh, like seeing the demo part. Now I'm going to talk about some internal mechanics of how it worked. So now there are two pieces to it, whatever you saw just now. One is uh, called Alpha Dynamic Semantic Intent. This is the technology which we have built where we are able to understand a plain English language, right? What is the intent of it? So when you're talking about things like show me the performance of a certain KPI for us, rather than uh, people look at things like uh, the sales, profit and other things or say any other column name for us, they are just column names. So what we try and understand using this uh, algorithm and technology is that what is the context which people are saying? So whenever it might be possible that there are two different tables which has the same column name, right? Let us say sales is available in orders table and sales is also available uh, in say uh, stock table. Now stock table, sales is available along with warehouse and the product. And in the other uh, orders table, sales is available with say uh, customers. So alpha and dynamic semantic intent can differentiate between when you're asking for sales for our customers by referring to the orders table. And when you ask about sales from products, it refers to the stock table. So that is something what alpha understands using this technology. And this is uh, possible using a bird kind transformer technology. The way it works is when you ask a big full frame question, Alpha tries to understand what are the basic things this question might mean, okay, that is one. And it tries to replace whatever it was able to understand in the question. And then it reprocesses the question and it keeps on doing this recursive decoding of the question till the time it is not able to resolve all the keywords which are present in the question. But that is just one part of the game. The second part of the game is how to formulate that query that is where the data query engine piece comes into play. So it is uh, capable of generating your queries only specific to Druid SQL uh, compliant SQL. Though for all of you to know, SQL typically hasn't changed in the last 20 years, but a Postgres SQL or a, or a say a Redshift SQL or a Microsoft SQL will be very, very different. So when you would like to take say 10 records out of uh, Druid, you would say limit 10. But if you want to do this thing in a SQL version, then you would like to say like uh, top with order by descending. So these kind of nuances and say the way the data gets formatted in Druid and other languages is very, very different. So that is where our data query engine comes into play. VX engine is the visualization engine which tries to understand that what kind of appropriate chart is possible over there, okay? So this is where the VX engine comes into play. And then we have got a natural language generator engine, okay, which is generating the semantics on the side. We have got a blind spot engine, which is finding anomalies, and then a human analysis engine. 
And all of this put together, we are able to apply enterprise data governance and the security. So if you are somebody who is based out of London, you cannot see US data, that kind of security. And we also have different database connectors available today, but, and the good part is you can just like Druid, you can run this either on the cloud on top of your imply instance, or you can run it on your Druid cluster straight away out of the box. Though there is a data flow, uh, which ensures that none of your data gets copied into any other format or it doesn't need to traverse, uh, you know, outside your company over there. So that is also one very good piece which we try to build in while uh, figuring out how do we run on Druid. And especially in our experience, uh, very recently we started to try out Imply Cloud and that is where we are working towards. So if you are using any kind of Imply Cloud, then you might be in luck. And uh, the third thing is uh, we are revealing this thing here this time. I'm going to show you something. What is the future for the developers out there? So this is what we are working towards and we'll be launching this soon on New Year. Have a look what is going to be possible. So you are able to see that as a developer, you'll be able to connect to your Druid instance and will be able to ask question in simple English and you can see the query which is getting generated out of the box. Now the good part is you can, you can start building your bigger queries on top of it. This is very helpful for all the data scientists and other people who don't want to invest their time in writing some basic queries, Googling about their basic formats around different things. All those things are, you know, will be things of a past. So just like a self-drive Tesla, you would finally have, which is a self-drive SQL. Now, very, very cool thing. A uh, lot many times we are being asked what kind of data warehouse we support. We start from anything between CSV, Excel, and Druid over there. Currently, you can also use this kind of technology on top of your any kind of BI products like Tableau, Power BI, ClickSense, those kind of things. And the good part is you can deploy it on your own cloud over there. And the best thing is about to come. <laughs> so now, you, if any one of you who is attending the session right now and you want uh, like a concept to run on your own thing, we are offering a no cost stuff, which you can go ahead and try it out. If you can visit https.alpha.ai/druid. Uh, it will be available for all the attendees right away right now, okay? And if you would like to connect with me, that's my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm very, very active on LinkedIn, specifically talking about Droid and the other data initiatives which we are taking. So I'll be more than happy to help you out over there also. And this brings us to the end of things and I'm open to questions. Thanks a lot. And if you go want to reach out to me, it will be Saurabh at the rate Alpha AI, okay? So that's about from my side. Uh, if you want, we can do a Q and A. Yeah, th thank you. Um, this is Rachel, by the way. That was an awesome presentation. Um, I'm here as your Q and A moderator. There was actually um, quite a few questions that came in through the um, the session chat, uh, and I think you answered um, quite a bit of them. Uh, I tried to find the ones that were questions, and it says, "What tech do you use for SQL generation from your voice commands?" I think you answered that, but would you like to? Clarify that for the audience. Yes. Uh, so uh, what we have done is we have written, uh, we have used Python uh, as a language to write that thing. And uh, we also use Node.js as technologies and specifically Node.js we use TypeScript, that is where. And the entire technology has been written from the scratch. And the entire library, which we have built around NLP or natural language, it is very specific to generating SQL. That has also been built from the scratch. And uh, what is the reason for building all of these libraries from the scratch is because these libraries are very specialized libraries. These are not your normal natural language libraries. These are libraries which are tuned for generating SQL. That is one thing. Second, the performance. <clears throat> So Alpha's technology, the natural language, uh, you know, English language to SQL query technology generates a SQL query. <coughs> so sorry. It generates a SQL query in less than one tenth of a second. So for making that kind of performance, that is what we had to go ahead and develop. 
and that is what the technology stack for alpha and you know, the good part is that it can connect to any kind of data lake and data warehouses but for the new ones we have started up in druid very very recently over there and still uh, it is in the wraps it's just the first time we have showcased druid natural language connector on this summit Awesome. Um, can you explain how you detect fraud when a fraud user does not withdraw amount for a period of time but waits? I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. But maybe this was a previous session question. Oh, okay. Probably. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Is there? Ah, uh, yeah, it was for the previous. Thanks for. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Um, yeah. Any um, any other questions out there? Let's see. I'm gonna go back to the session tab. There is a Q and A tab. Um, <laughs> somebody said it. Uh, it's sweet tech. It understands your voice commands better than Siri. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm really impressed. This stuff is so cool. We're gonna. Um, We'll have a chat about uh, doing a couple of uh, demos of this um, to promote out to the community later, because I think this is awesome. Somebody wants to know if you support joins. <laughs> yes. So uh, I would uh, share something very, very quickly to you. And uh, let me try and show you. OK. So you type in something like this. So you can see that it was able to connect the joints and all over there. Just one second, okay. Uh, so it, it alpha supports join right now. And the good part is that you can create uh, any number of joints in alpha and alpha is smart enough to, uh, you know, create the joints on it. So I think uh, Kasba, if I am uh, pronouncing your name correct, it's like, do you have any metrics for the SQL and intent accuracy? So uh, correctly, Kasba, uh, right away, right now, uh, most of the time we have a feedback mechanism where I'll just show it to you. So in the feedback mechanism, when you ask a question like, say, can you help me understand my, uh, say, the our <laughs> so sorry i was formulating the question so so if i ask a question can you show me my category and uh, subcategory level average profit uh, and say if you don't like it you can press this thing that is how we understand these things over there as a feedback right and uh, now if you try and click here it is able to see you the query. You can also run the query to check whether it is there. One of the cool things which we did around while building this thing was, so if I say select star and say, if you see it is a very, very Druid system. Oh, let me remove this thing. You will love this part and you can utilize this part very well. You can click on this stats. So typically when you work around large size of data warehouses, right, it is very hard for you to know all the possible values. So what alpha does it in the stats part, you can fire a simpler query and can tell you what percentage of items are there and what kind of value is there. And thanks to the power of Droid, I was able to generate this insights and stats on the fly over there for you. So that also helps. And uh, somebody asked how NLP is different for English to Spanish and Chinese programmatically. So Karthik, uh, typically uh, exchanging between languages is very, very different. But when you're trying to generate an SQL query, it is very different. So if I can change this thing to a normal query, let me try and just show you very, very quickly. And then you'll be under able to understand. Because if you're asking about, say, different pieces, in every for every business use case the database table structure can be different you can have multiple tables where your order structure can be there but for another customer you might have only one table but for uh, say third customer you might have 20 tables and the 20 tables will require say like five joins the two table will require one join and a single table is easy 
Now, the way we process the question is very, very same for all of these three scenarios, but the SQL which we are going to generate for all of these things will be different. I'm going to show you here. Can you show me our top five subcategories which are very popular across different states in West and do this thing for, uh, say, 2019? So if, if I, okay, across different states, but instead of different states, I can see only California and Washington. If I just change this thing to each state, try and see the visualization is amazing, but at the same time, this is an evolution chart. So there is a lot more knowledge goes into it. And the way you create this query is also very different. It's a row rank query done in a very different way than how you would do it others. Now, at the same time, if you try and put a numeric to it, like say some uh, profit or say some sales is less than 1,000, and then your query is going to change here, okay? So these are the kind of things what you will realize that uh, it is very different. And do you have the options? Yes, I can say like, Show me my sales by different states and subcategories. The good part is system is automatically generating, but I can go ahead and play around something like this. Maybe like this, maybe like a pie, or maybe like a heat map. Heat map is very powerful because it tells me that in California, my phone sales are very, very high. And if you want to do one last question as a simple stuff, apart from playing these things, you can ask, can you show me the list of all our customers buying a lot of phones in California? Tell me from what store clusters they are buying, what is their preferred ship mode, and what is the average sales they are giving to us, and what about the maximum profit we made? And do this thing for the last five years, and if possible, do this thing for, say, on a, on a yearly basis. Now, when you ask such kind of long questions, typically it will take a lot of time for people to understand and interpret, interpret those things, but it is very, very easy for you. I hope this is a very detailed answer about like how it is different. Did you see the other the other two questions that just came in? Uh, it's like, do I have an option to change the viz? Uh, I think uh, we answered this thing. We showed that how we can change the viz over there, the visualization, what he meant. More there. And in the general, let me just check the question. What happened to the stock? Reddit, Edward, never see it anymore. How do you compare Druid with Pino? That's like, no, I think they those, those are those general sessions. So. I think you've answered all the questions. Great, great, great. I hope everybody enjoyed and uh, it was good use of everybody's time. Thanks a lot for attending this session and uh, feel free to connect with me over LinkedIn. My name is Saurabh Modi and uh, I'm happy to help you all on your Druid journey.